How do you know if your child is a healthy weight? And why does a healthy weight matter so much? Public health physician Dr. David Allen says a healthy weight is much more important than simply how a child fits into their pants. The immediate short-term consequence is how the child is accepted by other children. And we all know that overweight children face certain kinds of prejudice as they're growing up. And they then have difficulty participating in sports teams, they can't run as fast, they can't do things as well. So just start with what the child knows, and that is, am I able to participate with other children on a normal way? Mm -hmm. So that physical participation is one. Part two is self-esteem. Many children who are overweight suffer from mm -hmm. tremendous amounts of ridicule. I'm a doctor, so my concern then focuses on, well, what are the health consequences of being overweight? And being overweight leads to now 24 different diseases and 10 forms of cancer. Now these are long-term complications. So when you eat something, you have immediate gratification. And the consequences can take 10 or 20 years to develop. Families play a key role in their children's weight. Well, the most important thing is for a parent to want to know what a healthy weight is. And there have been weight for height charts called growth charts published for 40 years by the National Centers for Disease Control. These charts measure something called body mass index or BMI. It's your child's height to weight ratio. It can be a complicated calculation which Dr. Allen says you should leave up to your pediatrician. But families make a point of asking your children's pediatrician where they lie on that growth chart. If your child is in the green zone, that means your child is healthy, weight for height. If your child is up in this top yellow zone, that's caution and you need to be concerned. Mm -hmm. If your child is in the red zone, then that really means you need to do something to help your child get back into the green zone. And parents are absolutely pivotal in this question. If your child falls in the green zone, keep eating a healthy diet full of fruits, vegetables, and whole grains plus protein. Be sure your child continues to spend at least 60 minutes a day in active play. If, however, your child falls in the yellow or the red zone, you need to take action. Parents really need to know that they are instrumental in what their child's growth and development is, mm -hmm. both with respect to um, academic performance and how they dress, but also their body weight. Because parents buy the food, parents prepare the food parents are in a position of either encouraging snack foods or discouraging snack foods and encouraging fruits and vegetables. To help families, there are many tools. Dr. Allen likes a program offered through the National Institute of Health called We Can. It's four classes which teach adults to buy, prepare, and serve nutritious, healthy foods, plus increase physical activity time while reducing screen time. He also recommends using your computer. Search for a reputable site like the National Institute of Health, the Mayo Clinic, the Center for Disease Control, or WebMD, and type in weight management. You'll find information on healthy foods and standard diets. Dr. Allen also likes a smartphone app which serves as a food diary. It's called Lose It. A healthy diet, however, is only one half of the equation. Dr. Allen wants families to pull the plug on screen time. A child really needs at least one hour of active physical activity every day. Mm -hmm. And you know, two hours is even better. And it, it contributes in so many ways to fitness, to self-esteem, mm -hmm. to blowing off energy so that the child can study better. Mm -hmm. It's been shown in, in now in many studies that those children that are physically active do perform better in school. Dr. Allen says playing with a friend will get your child moving more than if they're alone. And a jump rope is a great way to get kids moving, whether they're alone or in groups. Plus, simply timing your child while they run may be the easiest way of all to determine whether or not your child is fit. Well, one of the ways to know is to measure something. And the time it takes a child to complete one mile at their best rate, walk, run, you can even time it with a stopwatch or with your wristwatch. Yeah. And then there are charts that you can go to and say, if my child is 10 years old, what is ideal time, what's passing time, and what's the time that gives me a signal that the child needs a little bit more practice? Yeah. 
The important thing is you're really not racing against the world. You're racing against yourself. And as you grow as a child, you want your times to get better every year. You're not there to set world records. You're there to be fit. So you can be the best you can be and enjoy life the most it can be enjoyed.